YouTuber, Slom Accuser. <laughs> that is how he pronounces it. Um, or Slom Accuser, if you, if you wish. Uh, has uploaded two videos. The Macintosh Factory, uh, Part 1 and 2. And these videos are of the Apple Fremont plant in uh, Fremont, California. And this was one of the most advanced manufacturing facilities for computer systems in the world at the time it was built. And, um, and what we have in front of us is a computer or a complete system that was manufactured in that very plant on those very assembly lines by those very same people tested on those... you get the idea. <laughs> so, I want to talk a little bit about how this computer was, was manufactured in the U.S. affordably through the use of automation and intelligent case design. And we're going to do a complete teardown of the system unit, power it up, shut it down, tear it down, reassemble it, and power it back up again. Um, but before we get to that, I'm going to blab on and on about stuff you probably don't care about. Um, <laughs> so, this, um, from some of the research I've done on Wikipedia, um, there's a lot of cool stuff on there now. You should check it out. It's really cool. And it's free. Amazing. Um, I have learned that the 2CI was actually, or the 2FX uh, chassis, was the first product designed by Apple's in-house design team. Um, and it was designed just after they had split ties with Frog Design, or they were in that process of splitting uh, with Frog Design. And... Um, they designed the system to be manufactured with as few tools as possible. They got it down to just one screw in the entire system. Now, that's not including sub-assemblies like disk drives and power supply and etc. But you can disassemble the entire machine in just a... If you're good, you could probably do it in 30 seconds or less. I mean, it is that efficient of a design. So upgrades were a snap. Anyone could do the upgrades. Um, and the other thing that made these machines really cool upgrade-wise, and this is straying from the path here, but you could actually buy CPU upgrade cards or overdrive cards. They were basically advanced cash cards, and they would increase the system's performance substantially. <clears throat> now, I actually had one of these cards. It was a Sonnet Crescendo in my... Um, I had a Motorola Star Max that turned it into a power PC, or a G3 actually, which is really cool. But anyway, um, those types of upgrades were very popular with the professional series Macintosh computers back in the day. The Quadra series, uh, which succeeded the 2CI, or the 2 series. Um, anyway, so this Mac 2CI was manufactured in America by Americans, including the monitor and including the system board. And through that intelligent design and, and automation and training people to work in a clean and, and well laid out environment, they were able to make a profit on these machines. Um, I have actually seen footage of a Dell assembly plant um, and it was sickening. <laughs> I mean, people. I mean, this is actually when they were making them in the U.S. Certain models, and the f the footage was just. It was like, oh my God, Apple had it right twenty years before Dell. Unbelievable. Um, all right, so maybe ten years before Dell. But the point is, they did it, and it worked. And many of these systems are still around today to live and tell the tale, and Apple still made a profit. Um, I think, I hope, maybe, maybe not. Um, so let's go ahead and power it up. You'll notice I have an Apple CD300 by its side. <laughs> a caddy load SCSI drive manufactured by Sony. Interesting, Apple once had such close ties with Sony that Sony actually designed, or had a huge role in designing, the PowerBook 100. Um, Apple's second portable computer truly portable computer, battery powered. Sony and Apple were in bed for many years and um, my how things have changed. So let's let this thing power up. We're going to clear off a work surface. We're going to use the video trivia and a bucket of quarters here. Put 
that out, put that away. So we're going to boot this sucker up and we're going to shut it down, tear it apart, put it back together again, and fire it up again. Let's see how fast we can do it. And I'm going to do this holding the camera. I'm not using a tripod because I like to do things the hard way. At least that's what I'm telling you. Either that or I'm just too lazy to walk downstairs and get the tripod while it's booting up. I need to acquire a screwdriver. I've got one here somewhere. Uh, it should be right here. I gotta. Oh Jesus! I gotta clean this up. This is becoming a real mess. These are all my laptops. I've gotta sell those. I'm gonna start throwing them on eBay pretty soon. I've got like a hundred a hundred laptops. I don't even need. They're just old junkers. Nothing nice. You're gonna find that it probably takes longer to boot this machine than it does to tear it apart. Probably not surprising, is it? Oh, apparently it shut down. Oh, you know what? The last time I had it running, it crashed. Because I was running a screensaver that was defective. We'll get into that later. So here we go. Shut her down. Bing. Okay. Clock's running. I'm not keeping track of the time, so you guys have to. Got it? Good. got to be careful too because some of these parts are irreplaceable. <laughs> Don't want to break anything. We're going to take out the cash card first. Take out the one screw, just get that out of the way. hard drive out. First we're going to take this light out of there, squeeze and pull. Now, unplug the data cable and the power cable. Done and done. Now we're going to yank the power supply out. It's held in by a tab here. out the drive bay which is held in by a couple of clips and we're going to unplug the floppy drive. Bing done. Next we're going to yank the floppy drive out because it's mounted. Don't lose that screw. floppy drive was held in by a simple clip. Why don't we take these cables out? Just for good measure. Set them aside. Speaker comes out. Like so. Motherboard pops out. We have now liberated the motherboard from the PC. We are done disassembly. And while we have it apart, I'm going to show you these signatures that are engraved in the case mold. These are the development team for the Macintosh 2. Put the board back in. I could take the memory out of its slots, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to slide the motherboard precariously back in place. Done. Now, speaker. Done. OK, 
Okay, we got to put the floppy drive back in its holster. I'm losing time. No. This is actually kind of a pain to get in there. I should have, uh, should have realized that. Done. Got it. Next. Drive it back in place. Connector connected. Snap, crackle, pop. We're going to pop that screw in first. For ease of operation, we're going to pop the hard drive in first. We've got to connect our LED, put that back in its holder. Done. And cables. I actually go this way. It's a 50 pin SCSI cable. Some of you may not have ever seen this before wieldy gigantic little things. Power cable. We're almost done. Plug in the power. Hook in the data. And power supply. Done. Cash card. Case cover. Done and done. Now I gotta put it back. Okay. Monitor. Okay, let's look up all of our connections. slide this thing back. It's a slick surface so it's not going to skip or judder against the, the desktop. That's good. Don't want that to happen on a running machine. Hard drive damage. It's a bad thing. Like I said, it takes longer to disassemble and reassemble than it does to boot the damn thing. Wait, I meant that the other way around. <laughs> Shut up. But don't forget, we still have to check our alignment on the floppy drive. I need a floppy disk. Here we go. Just grab one of these gems. Oh wait, I got some over here. You gotta clean that up too. It's not really what this is. It's blank. We want to make sure that drive was installed precisely where it belongs, not a little bit off. So the disc has to eject and inject cleanly without hitting the sides. 
Now, for those of you Apple technicians um, like myself who've worked on modern systems like iPads and iMac 17-inch LCD models, things like that, you'll appreciate the simplicity of the design of this machine and the ease of repairs. It's, it's just a different world. <laughs> um, yes, I do iPad repairs, unauthorized iPad repairs. Avoid the warranty as soon as you pop the cover off. And that ain't fun. There we go. 15 minutes, 38 seconds, and we're completely booted. And that's including all the blabbering I did before I started disassembling. So that's not too bad. Um, now, if you're working in a factory, doing this, for, and you're working in a line, oh, you could have these things assembled in, the mat in a matter of seconds. I mean, really. Once you get that motion down pat, and you've got parts coming to you in order, you could have these things put together in, I'd say, 30 seconds or less. And... I mean, really, that, that cuts down your labor costs. It cuts down your overhead. Um, because you don't have to have people standing around with screwdrivers <laughs> zipping screws in cases all damn day. I mean, that's how you do it.